Mr. Paco Moshaisai, um, you must be sitting on piles and piles of money now that Metro Pacific uh, came in. I heard that you're going into philanthropy. Yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, yeah. you know, the CSR has been uh, part of Carmen's Space. Can you talk about that? And is that going to continue? Is that going to change with Metro Pacific uh, now in the picture? Yeah, I asked them about it because uh, we are supporting the PGH Medical Foundation, and we're also supporting the Good Shepherd Foundation in Baguio, the the sisters who make the ube jam and the strawberry mm -hmm. jam. And uh, when I did talk to them about it, they said, "No, there's no change with that." Yeah. Um, you know, when we started the business in 2011, we were already donating to the PGH Medical Foundation. But it's not something we wanted to broadcast to our right. our clients because it's not our way of getting business. You, know? you, you don't want to use it as a marketing tool. Yes, yeah. it's not a marketing tool for us. And more than anything, it's to show the people in our team in, in Carmen's Best how we are as an organization. And it was mainly that, you know, that was in my mind and not really promoting it. That's why it won't even be in our website that yes. we're supporting these uh, foundations. But, uh, you know, in our own little way, we help um, PGH and the Good Shepherd Foundation. But uh, recently you were elected uh, as a trustee to Halibon Foundation, which yes. incidentally is celebrating its 50th year this year. Yes. Um, was this a Carmen's Best initiative or is this a Paco Magsaysay initiative? Well, I was asked to uh, if I were I was interested to be part of Haribon, and I've heard of Haribon in the past since it's one of the older uh, foundations. So I was quite honored that I would even be asked to sit in the board. No? Um, I had already worked uh, with other foundations in the past, like Museo Pambata, and mm -hmm. partly with the Ramon Magsaysay Award Foundation on a non. Uh, on the sideline, I wasn't like uh, connected with the foundation. So I had some experience uh, working with foundations and now people are getting me to be part of foundations like Haribon and I'm also part of the Rotary Club of Manila Foundation which just got reactivated. Mm. Uh, so I, I like helping out, um, you know, and, uh, you know, doing our, our fair share and uh, set aside some time during our week to, you know, to help out. But definitely, I think it's a good example to the to the team members in the in the organization, and uh, you know, to the people that you deal with. All right. Do you do you do any mentoring? I, I don't know. Maybe either in your in your uh, company or elsewhere. Maybe through AIM's uh, network, where you're an alumnus, um, uh, mentoring young people who are looking into going into business themselves. Yeah, I'm part of the um, group of. Um, in, in AIM, um, okay. mentoring uh, SMEs or people thinking of getting into business. Mm. Uh, but it doesn't take up so much time the month. So okay. I'm able to do other things. So what, what are the things that, you know, um, young people, the, to the young people that are talking to, what are the, some of the things that are critical for them to know? Some of the things that you wish you knew uh, when you were, you know, starting your own ventures? Yeah. Well, I think more than anything, it's, it's, it's very general. It could be anything from understanding your personality or understanding why you want to get into a certain business and all that. So it's clarifying things first before, um, you know, being a cheerleader and telling them to do this and that, you know. So it's important that you're grounded, you know, and uh, you take things one step at a time. And, you know, if you're trying to go for the home run, then sometimes you'll strike out, you know. Right. So if you take things like, you know, go to first base first and then go to second base and right. build from that, then uh, yeah. hopefully you have a stronger foundation and, you know, going forward. You know, so, so don't be impatient. Is that what you're yes, saying? You cannot be impatient. Right. Because this is, not, this is not a sprint, nor is it a marathon. Okay. This is a... This is a, a an eight to ten year hike. <laughs> it's nonstop. I, I knew I was doing something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's I a, was in the wrong yeah, game. It's a hike that doesn't end, you know. So it's a, it's no joke. And uh, either you enjoy what you do, because if you don't enjoy it, then you'll quit. You know. But was this something that you were dreaming of when you were studying in Houston? That oh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll run a, an, I'll have an ice cream business. business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ice cream business. Or yeah. were you thinking of something more conventional, like finance or maybe uh, business or some kind? 
Actually, I was working for MCI, if you remember that company, yes. Microwave Communications. Yes. Uh, when AT&T was deregulated, and I, I was still in sales. I was working okay. in sales. But I remember I was the only Asian in an office of 50 people. Wow. And, you know, it, most of the people were, you know, uh, Caucasians. And right. Very few. I remember my, my first job. I was the only non-white in the entire yes. tutorial room in Oklahoma. No? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. So you understand. Yeah. But what I did was I used it to my advantage. Okay. I just hit all the Asian businesses. Okay. So I went to Bel Air, to all the Vietnamese stores. I right. went to, to all the oh, small stores. So. Yes. Yeah. I just did that. I never went to the bigger businesses that had, you know, Caucasians as running it because the chances of you getting, getting that account was slim to none, right? Whereas if you're working with all the other Asian businesses, it's easy to get the business. No, but, <laughs> so, but when your father called you, said, yeah. help with my VP campaign, does that did that signal the death of your dream to have, you know, to continue that career and maybe start, you know, basically fresh yeah. with uh, first cable and then farming and then ice cream? I didn't see it as a step to moving back to the Philippines. Okay. Because he didn't talk to me about it. Okay. Uh, for all. Well, that I was knew, your initiative. Okay. I knew that I was going to be living in the U.S. already. Okay. Uh, but when he asked okay. me to help him back here in the campaign, I said, yeah, no problem, I'll help you out, you know. So it just so happened that I was in between work at that time. Um, the, ele the campaign here is uh, February to, to May, and I didn't have uh, any work at that time, so I was able to come back here. And uh, I didn't even think of moving back here, even spending that first, uh, you know, uh, four or six months okay. back in the Philippines. But um, when my father lost and he felt that he wanted to come back into politics, he asked me to come back to help run the business. Okay. And uh, hesitant, I was hesitating coming back. But uh, you had your, your own thing. life. I had my own life yeah. already. You were, you were you working in Houston? Or did I you was, move to another state? No, I was working in Houston. Okay. Yeah, MCI. Okay. And um, well, I think everything happens for a reason, and uh, you know things turned out for the best. Do you never thought or never regretted that uh, you, you know about coming back here? Uh, did you imagine that your life would be totally different had you stayed in Houston? And would have been totally different, <laughs> very different. But yeah. um, you know, I think when when you get older and you uh, you you get touch base with your roots your family, then, you know, you start to see how important it is to be around family and, uh, you know, your culture. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, in the States, the other ice cream brand that I mentioned earlier is Ben & Jerry's. Yes. Did, did that uh, enter into your radar? I mean, did that um, inspire you to do something at, at all? Or did you, I know you probably studied in school in your MBA program as a case study, right? Uh, but, yes, uh, yeah, we studied uh, Ben & Jerry's. Yeah. And, um, well, I took a course in Penn State on, okay. on ice cream making. And, um, oh, I didn't know Penn State had that. Uh, yeah, because it's an agriculture school there. Right. Oh. So, and that's where Ben and Jerry studied. Okay. Ben and, ben and Jerry studied there um, in the 70s. And that gave them the idea to put up Ben and Jerry's. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I was there in the same uh, course, uh, being taught by the, some of the same teachers, uh, it was quite inspiring. So I really sat in the front and tried to absorb as much as I could. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was able to, to, to gain a lot of knowledge there because when we tweaked the recipe based on what I learned in Penn State, that's when we really picked up already. I see. Yeah, I see. So I studied ice cream. I see. Yeah. Um, are, what's what else on your what else is on your plate? I mean, uh, you, you said you have more people now to help you. Uh, my sense is that you still have a lot of things you want to do. Yes. Uh, now you have the, the tools and means to do it. What, what's uh, ahead for Paco Magsay today? Well, I think it's, um, the job is not over in terms of working with Karma's Best. Okay. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're trying to grow it to a certain level. And hopefully, uh, if we're able to reach that level, um, I haven't even thought about that <laughs> when we reach that level. Uh, hopefully we do, but um, we'll be doing it with not just ice cream, but other dairy products, drinkable yogurts, you know, cultured milk drinks and whatnot. So it's exciting because I think we have the base of clients who look to us for quality dairy products. And uh, rest assured, we don't intend to dilute or lessen the quality of what we're doing.
I, I'm surprised that your dad mentioned that your grandfather was really looking into farming. Yes. I read the biography of him a long time ago, and he was a gifted mechanic from what I remember. And yes. I thought he would have been into uh, running a transportation business or uh, yeah. a fleet yeah. of... Uh, <laughs> you never thought about uh, maybe going into that business? You know, um, in the... I heard that he could just listen to an engine. And he could tell. He could tell what was yeah. wrong with it. You know? uh, my Lolo on my mother's side owned uh, gas stations around Metro Manila called Motorist Haven, Motorist Holiday. And I actually would work there. And I worked as a mechanic because it was not ele electronic yet. It was oh, timing belt. It, yeah. was, it was very mechanical. So you didn't need to have a, a degree to work on engines. And I was actually working as a mechanic in, in the gas stations of my Lolo mm -hmm. during, during doing tune-ups and <laughs> oil changes and what have you. But it was not for me. I think uh, my calling was really for for ice cream. Well, I think a lot of people will be thankful for that. Paco, thank you very much for your time. But before we go, maybe you'd like to leave our guests with a message? Yes, yeah. Well, uh, whenever I talk to uh, people who have questions about our journey, I always tell them to first understand themselves. Uh, what do you really want to do when you grow up? Uh, what is your uh, personality in terms of your attitudes towards money and what have you? Um, it's important that you do something that you enjoy simply because if you get into something from the start, you'll take a lot of your time to grow the business. So if it's something that you don't really enjoy, it's going to be difficult for you spending a lot of time working the business. So I think when you start answering all these questions, uh, hopefully things will get clearer for you as the days and the years go by. And I, I wish you all well. Well, Paco, thank you very much for your time. I'd like to thank our guests as well watching this program live and watching the replay. I'd like to thank Pastor Polo Kibuloy for making this program possible. This has been SMNI's Business and Politics. I'm Dante Kling Ang, and I'll see you next week.